Hello children, welcome to biology class. So we are discussing the lesson, the fundamental unit of life. Today we will discuss about lysosomes, mitochondria, plastids and vacuole. Let's start the class. So the first cell organ we are going to discuss today is lysosome. So this is lysosome. Lysosomes are a kind of waste disposal system of the cell. Okay, and it helps to keep the cell clean by digesting any foreign material. Foreign materials entering the cell such as bacteria or food as well as old organelles end up in the lysosomes which break up them into small pieces. Okay, and lysosomes are able to do this because they contain powerful digestive enzymes. Okay, they are capable of breaking down all the organic material. So here you can see digestive enzymes. They are capable of breaking down all organic material. Here, yeah. and during the disturbance in cellular metabolism, for example, when the cell get damaged, lysosome may burst and the enzyme digest their own cell. That's why lysosomes are also known as suicide bag of the cell. Children, why lysosomes are called suicidal bag of the cell? When the cells feel any disturbance in cellular mechanism, what 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 the lysosome will do? When the cell get damaged and lysosomes inside the cell burst the cell and the enzyme digest their own cell. Thus, it protect other cells from damaging. Clear? That's why. So that's why lysosome. The lysosome in a particular cell commits suicide. Isn't it? To protect other cells. Clear? That's why lysosomes are known as suicide bag of a cell. Clear? And the structure. Structurally, lysosomes are membrane bound sacs filled with digestive enzymes. So you can see here digestive enzymes. Hydrolytic enzyme mixtures. These enzymes are made by RER. What is RER? Yes, rough endoplasmic reticulum. Lysosome is clear. Lysosomes are also known as suicide bag of the cell. And it is filled with digestive enzymes. Okay. Next cell organelle is mitochondria. You know, it is a powerhouse of the cell. Why it is termed as powerhouse of the cell, children? Yes, the energy required for various chemical activities needed for life is released by mitochondria. In which form? Yes, in the form of ATP. What is the expanded form of ATP? Adenosine triphosphate molecule. So, it will release ATP by the process cellular respiration. Clear? So ATP, that's why ATP is known as energy currency of the cell. Okay, The body uses energy stored in ATP for making new chemical compounds and for mechanical work. And the structure. Mitochondria have two membrane covering instead of just one. An outer membrane and an inner membrane. Outer membrane is very porous whereas inner membrane is deeply folded. I will show you the diagram. You can see porous outer membrane here and folded inner membrane and these folds are known as cristae. Spell it as C-R-I-S-T-A-E and it is filled with matrix. Clear? This is the structure. And these folds, why these folds are present in mitochondria? Yes, it create a large surface area for ATP generating chemical reactions. So mitochondria one more specialty is there. It's a strange organelle in the sense that they have their own DNA and ribosomes. Therefore, mitochondria are able to make some of their own proteins. Okay. And next one, plastid. I know you are familiar with plastid, isn't it? Plastid are present only in plant cell. Huh? And we can divide plastids into two as Colored plastids and colorless plastids. Colored plastids are known as chromoplast. Okay. And colorless plastids are known as leucoplast. Okay. And the first one chloroplast which is included in chromoplast. Isn't it? We know that chloroplast gives green color to 
lace. So plastids containing the pigment chlorophyll are known as chloroplast and they are important for photosynthesis in plants. Not only this chloroplast, it contains various yellow or orange pigments in addition to chlorophyll such as xanthophyll, carotenoid and endocyanin. This yellow color is because of the pigment xanthophyll. Spell it as X-A-N-T-H-O-P-H-Y-L-L. -L. Clear? And carotenoid. Carotenoid. C-A-R-O-T-E-N-O-I-D. Which gives orange color. And endocyanin. A-N-T-H-O-C-Y-A-N-I-N. Which gives reddish color. Clear? Children, let me ask you a question. We can see a red colored, a ripened tomato here. It is due to chromoplast. So, which pigment will be the? Yes, anthocyanin. Clear? So, in this diagram, it is very clear. Different color is due to the presence of different pigments. Isn't it? And chloroplast, it stores chlorophyll pigment. Chromoplast stores other color pigments such as anthocyanin, carotenoid and xanthophyll. Whereas leucoplast stores stars. Next, we can discuss about leucoplast. It is colorless plastid. So what will be its function? Yes, storage. Leucoplasts are primarily organelles in which materials such as starch, oil and protein granules are stored. Okay, so the internal organization of the plastids consists of numerous membrane layers embedded in a material called stoma. Okay, same as that of plastids, uh, plastids have their own DNA and they have their own ribosomes. Okay. And the last one is vacuoles. Vacuoles are storage sacs for solids or liquid contents. Vacuoles are small sized in animal cells while plant cells have very large vacuoles. So, can see very large vacuole here. So, the central vacuole of some plant cell may occupy 50 to 90 percentage of cell volume. Okay? In plant cell vacuoles, they are full of cell sap and provide turgidity and rigidity to the cell. So, I will show you uh, this is a plant cell. You can see centrally located a big, very large vacuole. Isn't it? So, that you can easily differentiate the size of vacuoles in animal cell and plant cell. Compared to plant cell, animal cell is having very small sized vacuole. But here in plant cell, centrally located large vacuole. Isn't it? And what are the functions of this vacuole? Many substances of importance in life of plant cells are stored in vacuole. And these substances include amino acids, sugar, various organic acids and some proteins. In single cell organisms like amoeba, the food vacuole contains the food items that amoeba has consumed. Okay? And in some unicellular organisms, specialized vacuoles are also play important role in expelling excess water and some waste from the cell. Okay children? And we are going to conclude the lesson. So let me ask one question. How can we differentiate a plant cell and an animal cell? What are the differences children? Yes, plant cell have cell wall but animal cell is devoid of cell wall. Instead it is having cell membrane. Isn't it? They contain chloroplast. They don't have chloroplast and other pigments. And do not have centrioles. But here centriol is present. Then vacuole is very large and it occupies in the center of the cell. But in animal cell, vacuole is small. The nucleus is present in the side of plant cell. But here, nucleus is present in the center of animal cell. Again, observe these two diagrams and draw these two diagrams into your notebook. I will add this diagram in notes. Okay? Don't forget to redraw this diagram, this label diagram to your notebook. Same differences. Animal cells are generally small in size compared to plant cells. Cell wall is absent but it is here present. They never possess plastids. Vacuoles are smaller in size. And in this slide it is clear. Differences and similarities are given here. 
isn't it? So plant cells, cell wall, protoplast, large vacuoles, here centrioles and centrosomes, small vacuoles, cilia or flagella and these are the similarities between two cells. I hope you understood this lesson well. Okay, study well children. Children, in our syllabus there are practical experiments. From biology, six experiments are there. I will demonstrate all the experiments. Okay. The first one is preparation of temporary mount of human cheek cell. Preparation of temporary mount of human cheek cell. Okay. So let's go to biology lab. Shall we? For this experiment, we need a glass light. So children, keep it in mind. While holding a glass light, you have to keep your fingers on the edges don't touch on the part on the center or any part of the slide on the edges only okay then cover slips stain to color the cell here I am using methylene blue methylene blue can easily take up the color so the cell we are using is cheek cell so the cheek cells can easily take up the stain then toothpick water Dropper, then needle. Okay, let's start the experiment. First of all, we have to take one drop of water and put the drop of water in the center of the cell. Center of the cell. Okay. Then add one drop of methylene blue. In the center of the slide, where we put the drop of water. Then, take one toothpick and scrap the inner side of your cheek gently, okay? Scrap with the inner side of your cheek and the material add to the stain, okay? Then take one cover slate and slowly keep it on the center and with the help of a needle mount over it. Okay. Now the slide, mounted slide of cheek epithelium is ready. Keep it on the stage of a microscope and use a low power and observe the slide through the microscope. So you can see irregular shaped cheek cells. Can you see children? Irregular shaped blue colored cheek cells. Children, this is a microscopic view of human cheek cell. Irregularly arranged human cheek cell. So, by using the lower power of microscope, we can observe the cell membrane, cytoplasm and prominent nucleus at the center. Children, hope you all understood this practical experiment. Okay, study well. So, now we conclude the lesson. Study all the points. If any doubts are there, ask me. Read the textbook well. Okay, children, we can meet in next class.